The RTX 5060 Ti launched in April, and if the historical Steam hardware charts are anything to go by, it's going to be the highest utilized card here in just a couple of years. But is it the card that you want for your streaming PC? Now, it doesn't come without its fair share of drama and pros and cons, just like every graphics card on the market right now, but let's chat real quick about the pros and cons specifically of the RTX 5060 Ti and what kinds of CPUs I'd be pairing with it to get the best bang for your buck for a streaming and gaming PC. You better grab your favorite drink because this is gonna be an in interesting one. Speaking of drinks, cheers to Geekodo Gamers for making this video possible. Geekodo Gamers offers a long list of items including studio and LED lights, light modifiers, tripods, card readers, and even this mic arm that I'm using right now. All insanely important things when it comes to content creation and streaming. And right now you can use my code DDT10 for 10% off of your order of all of that stuff from the link down in the description. Cheers. Let's start with what exactly the 5060 Ti actually is. The RTX 5060 Ti is aiming to be an entry level card, great for 1080p and even some light 1440p streaming and gaming. And for some reason, Nvidia created an eight gigabyte and a 16 gigabyte version of this card. Even though they're about to release the 5060, which also has eight gigabytes of VRAM. Now, most people are flat out trying to cancel NVIDIA for even thinking about a GPU with eight gigabytes of VRAM, but there's definitely a use case here, I think. Most likely, that's not streaming, and it's definitely not AAA gaming at this point. If you're the person that has been playing Counter-Strike for the last 20 something odd years, and your GTX 980 has finally bit the dust, you need something to replace it. The 5060 Ti eight gigabyte model might actually be perfect. For, for literally anybody else, I would probably go with the 16 gigabyte model just to be safe. Especially if you can find either of these cards close to their MSRP, we've got 429 for the 16 gigabyte model and 379 for the 8 gigabyte model. Taking pricing like that into account, it just it doesn't make sense to not go for the 16 gigabyte model. You're literally getting 21% more power out of the 16 gigabyte model, especially when it comes to higher end games. Now, the 5060 Ti does have access to DLSS 4, which is nice and one of those things to think about, but that still requires power to run. So I don't think the target audience is still gonna get a ton of use out of this card. If you're looking for 1440p, 4K, high settings on all of the latest AAA games, I'd probably recommend going with something a little bit more powerful like the 5070 Ti or even something even older like the 4070 Ti Super. Honestly, if it wasn't for Twitch not supporting AV1 encoding yet, I'd probably be more likely to recommend one of the new AMD 9070, 9070 XT cards or even one of the rumored Intel B780 cards that we're hopefully gonna see here soon for a similar price point and way more power. So the 5060 Ti isn't going to be crushing 4K ultra settings. It will handle esports titles, battle royales, just chatting streams at 1080p, just fine, especially when paired with the right CPU. So depending on the games that you wanna play, the resolution and quality that you wanna play them at, the goals of your content creation journey and your budget too, uh, I've got a couple of different options for what CPU to pair with the 5060 Ti, and I think you're gonna like some of them. All right, so we're gonna start off with the budget and esports and just chatting type of bundle here. We're gonna go with the Intel Core i5-12600K or KF, whichever one is cheaper when you get there. The F literally just stands for integrated graphics. So if for some reason you want the option of being able to plug in a monitor to your motherboard through the HDMI port on your motherboard, make sure you get just the flat K. But if you don't care about that, if you're always gonna have a dedicated graphics card, then if the KF is cheaper, I would go for that. This chip is honestly an absolute beast for the money. 10 cores, great single core performance, perfect for gaming, and 
honestly enough power for multitasking to get this, the basics of streaming done. Streaming with OBS, being able to run Discord in the background, plug in a handful of USB peripherals like your webcam and, and microphone, and be able to handle all of that just fine. Absolutely perfect for competitive games like Valorant, Fortnite, Apex Legends, games that are already fairly easy to run. Pair this with the 5060 Ti, and you've got a very efficient powerhouse gaming and streaming machine for, depending on what price the GPU is at, hopefully less than $1,500. Now more in that mid-range balanced budget type of area, and honestly where I recommend for most streamers, if you want to play any game out on the market today, I would recommend the Intel Core i7 14700K or KF variant, whichever one is least expensive. This CPU is gonna provide you a little bit more headroom for those high quality streams, editing, multitasking, uh, anything that you can throw at it. This processor gives you 20 total cores, eight productivity cores and 12 efficiency cores, absolutely going to crush any 1080p, 1440p workloads. This is the CPU that I recommend for most people. It's comfortable, reliable, and ready for anything. This is the one that's going to be very, very comfortable. I could recommend it to anybody. Are there processors that are more powerful? Absolutely. We're gonna talk about those in a second, but nobody is gonna have a problem with this processor. Now, if you're team red and looking for that AMD alternative, typically I recommend Intel processors, typically because Intel performs just a little bit better on most of the productivity angles. But if you have to run an AMD processor, they will 100% work. I recommend the Ryzen 7 9700X. It's a great AM5 option, eight cores, 16 threads, and built on a power efficient four nanometer process. It pairs really, really nicely with the 5060 Ti, especially if you want to stay on the AM5 platform for future uh, upgrades. This socket is still really new and gonna be supported for a while. Now, I know you all are rushing to the comments to say, why didn't you recommend a 7800X3D or a 9800X3D? Yes, they are amazing, fantastic processors, but honestly, for the price difference to performance difference, you're not going to be happy with the difference between the 9700X and any of those X3D processors. Are those the absolute best processors for gaming? Yes, but when it comes to frame for frame and productivity purposes, you don't need one of the X3D processors. Even if you can find one, they're gonna be double the price of the 9700X. All right, and if you want the highest end of the highest end of CPUs, if you are all in on streaming, video editing, content creation, future proofing, this is your processor the Intel Core Ultra 9 285K. The Core Ultra 9 285K is on the new LGA 1851 socket, which is gonna give you the latest cutting edge features, AI acceleration, fast encoders, enough performance to stream, render, and game simultaneously, absolutely without flinching, as well as, again, being on Intel's newest socket, so it's going to be the most future-proof at this point. If you have to be on the highest of the high end of the AMD side, I would, however, recommend the 9800X3D. It is literally just the best. Even if it's not the most price to performance efficient, it is the best. And it is actually what my friend Cloutshot just put in his build. It was a pretty crazy build if you wanna see it. Uh, make sure you click the link up there. But with any of these CPUs, you are well on your way to having an awesome streaming and gaming PC. But if building a PC from scratch isn't exactly your thing though, I'd be happy to help you out. If you head over to devindoestech.com, fill out the build a PC request form, maybe I'll even build that computer live on stream. Also, uh, check it out up there, but YouTube thinks that you might like that video next. So we'll see you over there. Cheers.